All right, welcome to my software demonstration in Revit on how to work with families and specifically what we're working on are window families. And so this is the problem we have right now. We're working on this floor plan for the reserves at South Plains. So if we take a look at the windows in this project, I'm going to zoom in down here. So down here I've got three windows but only one tag. And so if I go and take a look at that group of windows, there's actually six windows there, but all one tag. So the way these work is they come from the manufacturer pre-hung. And so it's one window that is pre-hung that you put into your building. So when we work in Revit, every time we place a window, it's going to get itemized. So here in this project, I've got these two windows, and you can tell that it's counted them each one of them once. So if we were to do this just by placing fixed windows, we'd end up with more windows than what we need. So this is how we're going to go about fixing this problem. So we come in here to Revit, click on this big R, come on down to New, and we're going to click on Family. And when it asks us to select a template, we're going to click on Window Template, hit Open. It's going to bring us into our Family Editor, and it's going to open a window that we can start with. So I'm going to come up to this R. Come on down to save as and save as family. And so if you're one of my students, you can just save this on your network along with your project. I'm just going to stick it on my desktop and I'm going to call it fixed SATC 73 by 44. And the reason why I'm going to make it a 73 by 44 is because back in the South Plains project, I'm going to show you how to work on this grouping, this grouping for G. And so it's six foot one by three foot eight, and then there, there are actually two 30 by 38 windows with an inch gap in between them at a sill height of three feet. So again, if you're one of my students, you can open this project off of the R drive and you can follow along as we're doing this. So the first thing is here in your family, we're going to click on this family types and it's going to bring up some information that we've got with our window, such as height. So we want that height to match our window, which was three foot eight. So we're going to type in three space eight there. The width is already set at three feet, so that's good. Our default sill height, it's already set at three feet and that's what we want it. So we can go ahead and hit OK in here. And now we can take a look at this browser a little bit. So if you expand your browser out, you've got a few different plan views in here. So it opened up on my reference level. I can also have a 3D view, so I can double click on view one. And right now you'll see that right now this is just an opening in a wall. That's all this window is right now. Come on down, you've got your exterior elevation. You can look at it. Again, it's just an opening in a wall, interior elevation and so forth. So let's come on back up here to this reference level. So the first thing is, this is two windows, and so this green dashed line in the middle, this is a reference plane. If I hover over it, it tells me it's a reference plane that's the center of my left and right. So I don't actually have a window at the center. I want this to be on the left side, and then I'm going to make a copy of all the work we're going to do. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to click a point, drag down into the right, and let go. And when I have that selected, it's my opening cut. And I want to just make a, I just want to move this. So I'll use my move command and I want to move it straight to the left, one feet, six and one half inches. So one space, 6.5 and hit enter. And so the way this family was created, this opening has got some constraints to the center plane. I'm just going to remove those. So there's my opening off over to the left. And now what I want to do is I want to actually create an extrusion. So to create my extrusion, I first have to create a reference plane. So I'll click on create, come on over here to reference plane, and I want a reference plane. I'm just going to come off over here to the left somewhere where I'm lined up with this interior face. I'm going to click there, come straight over to the right, and I'm going to click again, hit escape a couple times. Now when I click on that plane, over here in properties under identity data, I can give it a name. So I'm going to name it interior face. And that way, I can choose that, once I've named it, I can choose that plane to create a sketch on that plane. So name it, hit apply, 
come here in your graphics area and just click somewhere and that will deselect that reference plane. Now come on over to create and we're going to create an extrusion. Go ahead and click on extrusion. And before we do anything, we need to set our work plane. And this is where we're going to be sketching our extrusion. So go ahead and click on set. And now you'll notice that it's an option here that you can click on reference plane into your face and hit OK. And then Revit says you can't see the plane in this view because right now the plane is just a line. So you need to go to another view to be able to sketch this. So elevation exterior will work. I'll hit open view. It takes me there. And so here's my opening. I'm going to use this pick lines option. And I'm just going to select all four sides of this opening. And then I'm going to lock them down. So if my opening ever moves, this sketch will move with it. And then I'm going to come up here to offset, click on offset, set my offset to be three inches, so zero space three. Come in here, hover over the inside of each of these lines, and then click. And I'll offset all those lines to the inside. I'll use this trim extend to a corner, I'll click on it, and then just click on two parts of the lines that I want to keep, and it will form a corner from those two clicks. And now I've got my extrusion. The only other thing I need to do is specify how deep I want this extrusion to go. So for that, so starting from the inside, if this wall had 5 8 inch sheetrock on it, that would be 3 8 of an inch. And then if it had a 2 by 4 stud, that would be 3 and a half inches. And then if it had 5 8 inch sheathing, it would be another 5 8 And if it had 5 8 inch of siding, it would be another 5 8 so that'd be five and three eighths inches thick. So that's where I'm gonna set this extrusion to be 5.375 inches. And then hit apply. I hit my green check mark. It creates my extrusion. I come over to my 3D view, view number one. Take a look at it. Hold down my shift key and my wheel on my mouse and I can orbit around. And now you can see how I've just made this frame. That's basically all I did is just made a frame. So if I go back to my floor plan, my reference level, you can see what it's going to look like. And so right now that's all it is and that's what it's going to look like when it's cut. So I also need to put some glass in here. So to put the glass in, I'm going to come over to annotate, click on symbolic line. My subcategory for this is going to be glass cut. And I'm going to click on the midpoint of my inside of my frame on the left and then the midpoint of the inside of the frame on the right and that's going to add that line in there and now i'm going to add some dimensions just to constrain it with where it's at so i'll click on that dimension tool i'll come in here hover over this line it says that's the extrusion shape handle that's what i want to click on if you don't happen to get that you can hit tab and it will cycle through a bunch of options until eventually it will come back to the extrusion shape handle so I'll click there, click on the symbolic line that we created, click on the extrusion shape handle on the top, drag that dimension off over to the left. And when you do that, you'll notice this little EQ. Right now there's a slash through it, which means not equal. If I click on that icon, that makes those two dimensions equal. And it will constrain them that way. So that if the thickness of my extrusion changes, then the location of the symbolic line will change as well. So that looks pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and click on my extrusion. And when you click on it, you'll get some options up here. And so if you happen to make it on the wrong work plane, you can select edit work plane, and then it'll allow you to select a different work plane. If you need to edit your extrusion, you can click on edit extrusion. It says you can't edit your sketch in this view because you can't see your sketch. You need to go to a different view. So I'll just go to that open exterior elevation. And so we don't need to actually make any changes. So I'll just hit my green check mark here. I'll close this view. It takes me back to this uh, floor plan view. Again, if I click on my extrusion, the one other option I get are these visibility settings. So if I click on that, this is, I'm choosing where I want this extrusion to, to be displayed. So it's always going to be in 3D views. So if you want it to show up in plan view, you need to have that box checked. If you want it to show up in your elevations, front, back, left, and right, you need to have those boxes checked. And then if you want it to show up when it's cut in a floor plan view, you need to have that checked. 
And if you only want it shown in either coarse, medium, or fine, you can check and uncheck those boxes as you want to. So I'm going to hit OK. Everything there looks good. Now I'm ready to make a copy of this. So I'm just going to click a point up here to the left, drag over and to the right, and then let go. I'm going to click on Filter and see just what I got selected. So I got my lines, I've got my opening, and I've got other. Everything there looks good. I'll hit OK. I'll click on Copy, click a point, move straight to the right, and type in three feet and one inch. And it makes a copy over there. Uh, it kind of stuck my my second constraint here in the middle. I'll just kind of move it over here to the right somewhere. Just kind of clean that up a little bit. Again, go to my 3D view, take a look at it. That's what it looks like. About the only thing we're missing is the mullions. And so if you're not doing your elevations, there's no reason to add those in. I'll do a separate video that shows you how to draw those in. So at this point, we are ready to test this. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to open my project back up. So here's my project. Now I'm going to come on over to the View tab, click on Switch Windows, and I just need to go to back to any of these that say Fixed. So I'll just go back to my Fixed Reference Level. And I'm going to click on Load Into Project. Since my Clubhouse is the only project I have open, it's going to load it into this project. Now I can come in here, and I can click on one of these walls, and it's going to add those windows in there. So now you can see I still have these two windows up here, and then I've got this one window grouping here. So now if I go look at my schedule, my window schedule is showing me three windows. So if I come down here and edit this, and take off or actually check itemize every instance you'll see I've got a total of three windows when in my project I actually have four windows so that's working just the way I wanted it to and if you look at the elevations I've got my front elevation so that's what it looks like there so the elevation looks okay my floor plan view. So then looking at this, uh, something doesn't look quite right now that we've uh, inserted this and tested it. These, our window should be all the way on the inside. So if we click on the window, we'll get this option to edit family. And then that brings us in here to our floor plan. So what happened was we didn't get this I didn't get this uh, reference plane attached, so I can actually grab that reference plane, and it's attached to my openings, but it should be attached to the wall. So when I move it, I'm just going to click on it and just drag it, and I can move it around. And what I want to do is come up here and use my align tool, come on in here, and I'm going to hover over this interior face of this wall, I'm going to hit tab, so I actually get the wall selected, I'm going to click there, then click on my reference plane, and then lock that down. And now with that locked down, I hit escape a couple times. I can go ahead and save this. Now I can load this into my project. It'll ask me, do I want to overwrite the existing version? And I'll hit yes. And then you'll see how your windows will jump to the inside the way they should be displayed. So there's your little crash course into how to work with Windows in Revit to edit some families so that you can create these window groupings like what you need for your projects. So good luck with this. I, I expect you to have some trouble. So as you run into problems, just ask and I'll help you through it. I know you only have a few to create. So good luck and uh, I hope everything goes well. Thanks for listening.